July 4th, 1945. The Second World War is over. The bloodiest war in human history has finally gone silent. With a stroke of a pen, an armistice is signed. The Axis powers have finally won. As Hawaii is flooded with radioactive flames, now all of Asia is under the heat of the rising sun and all of Europe under the shadow of the swastika. The old world has fallen into the tight grasp of fascism. A new order has risen. How did this happen? What caused this new age of darkness? Well, let's have a look at the past. What caused the defeat of Germany to become the dark right that swelled all of Europe along with its allies? In 1914, the Great War began, engulfing Europe in fire and gunpowder, with the catalyst being the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand. By the war's end, the Russian Empire had fallen into brutal civil war between the Whites and the Reds. The Austro-Hungarian Empire shattered, the German Empire defeated and humiliated after the Treaty of Versailles was placed upon them, creating more problems for the new Weimar Republic, which formed after the fall of the Empire. Over in the East, the Russian Civil War had eventually led to a Red victory, creating the Soviet Union. After the death of Lenin in January 1924, a new leader, took over the country, Nikolai Bukharin, beating his rival Joseph Stalin for the position. Bukharin implemented new economic policies for the USSR to help it make it a new power in Europe and the world. However, this only ended with disastrous results, the Soviet economy collapsing, creating famines, and furthermore, failed industrial plans and political violence, only leading to the Red Army being disorganized, weak, ill-prepared for what would eventually come. After the rough beginning years of the Weimar Republic, everything seemed to be going well, until the 1929 stock market crash, creating the Great Depression and hurting most of the world, especially Germany, who had war reparations and loans to pay back. This would eventually lead to the National Socialist German Workers' Party taking control of a large percentage of the Reichstag, leading to Hindenburg and von Papen to make a very fatal decision, leading to the takeover of the government by Adolf Hitler in 1933, and after the death of President Hindenburg, Germany became a one-party totalitarian regime hell-bent on getting rid of the Untermensch or undesirables such as Jews, homosexuals, gypsies and many more and the complete destruction of communism to bring about a thousand year Reich. In the land of the free, the Great Depression really hurt the American people. A very disdained contrast in the Roaring Twenties. In 1932 Democratic National Convention FDR tried his best to get the Democratic nominee, but his ideas of a New Deal and economic change to help repair the economy from the Depression sounded too much like the failed economic plans of the Soviet Union. And so, 
he lost the nominee to Al Smith, leading to Herbert Hoover winning the 1932 election just barely, leading to America having a very slow response and solution to the depression. The 1936 Democratic candidate was Joseph P. Kennedy Sr., who had similar economic policies to FDR, but with limits, working alongside many conservatives, as well as a strict stance in isolationism, seeing it no place for the United States to intervene in any European wars. Both of these policies would lead to his victory in the 1936 election. Dissatisfaction after the Great War, Italy was not pleased with what they gained from the war, promised more than what they actually got, Italy with a bitter taste in their mouth when it came to the Western powers, especially Britain and France, which would end up with the black shirts marching on Rome, leading to the fascist dictatorship of Benito Mussolini. Eventually, Mussolini would sign a pact of steel with Germany in 1938, along with the tripartite pact helping create the Axis powers of the German Reich and the Japanese Empire. Either way, Italy was looking out for its own sake and whatever would lead them to their dream idea of rebuilding the mythical Roman Empire. No matter what path they take to achieve this dream, it will be solidified in blood. A bit like the real Roman Empire. In the Far East, the Japanese Empire also dissatisfied with what they got from the Great War and how they were treated at Versailles, made them realise the West wasn't going to help but only get in their way of creating a new Asian Empire. This would eventually lead to the Marco Polo Bridge incident, causing the Second Sino-Japanese War in 1937, where they saw to conquer their neighbour to the West, the Republic of China, Japan decimated the Republic of China's army, and with the Americans sticking to strict isolationism and the Soviet Union trying to survive its own mistakes, seeing China with no outside aid from any Western nation. This would eventually lead to the first year of the war, having Japan hold most of the cities in their hand. However, due to desperate Chinese tactics, the fight got dragged out and both sides dug in, waiting for the long day. By this point, both sides had lost a great deal of men, especially China. The war would continue to drag out for many more years to come. But as that was happening, the Japanese High Command were planning for their next move, their next conquest. Britain and France, both scarred by the Great War, wanted to never let anything like that happen again, especially France, as the war for them was mainly fought on their land. Britain was hit hard by the Depression along with France. France would have problems with political violence with the far right and the far left, putting straight on France. The two nations, seeing Hitler's ambitions, chose to approach Hitler with appeasement. They wanted to avoid the horrors of the First World War, as well as prepare in case both nations had to go to war. 1938, Germany annexed Austria and the Anschluss. With that going so smoothly and simply, they turned their attention to Czechoslovakia for the sedating lands. Britain and France thought they should be the ones to do the negotiation of the Reich, and got Hitler to promise that he would leave Czechoslovakia alone for the sedating lands. He agreed, and Germany annexed the lands only to break his promise and take the rest of the Czech Republic and puppet Slovakia. Hitler then demanded the territories of the Polish Corridor, which were once part of the German Empire. With the Allies seeing Hitler for what he was, and knew they had to do something. On September 1st, 1939, Germany invaded Poland. And two days later, on September 3rd, Britain and France declared war on Germany, starting the Second World War.
Even though the Poles fought hard, they couldn't withstand the German onslaught and then the invasion of the East from the Soviet Union, splitting the country in half. In April 1940, Operation Weser Ubon was launched, which saw Germans invade and conquer Denmark and Norway swiftly and with ease. Eventually, some time after, an assault began against Belgium, the Netherlands and France in May 1940, leading to the British trying to make an evacuation at Dunkirk. However, the Germans secured and destroyed the British Expeditionary Force. After that, the rest of France fell, with the Vichy puppet being propped up in the south. After the fall of France, Italy joined the war on Germany's side, pushing into Africa and taking Egypt in the Suez Canal, along with a Falchum Jaeger attack on Gibraltar, leaving the British fleet trapped in the Mediterranean Sea, only to be hunted down by the Italian fleet and the German Luftwaffe, crippling the Allies in Africa. By 1941, the Axis had control of most of Europe and North Africa, but the Germans weren't satisfied of their holdings and wanted to achieve Lebensraum. So in the summer of 1941, launched Operation Barbarossa. Due to the lack of industry and the extremely poor state of the Red Army, the Axis blasted through the Soviet Union, creating chaos and death wherever they went. In a last attempt to turn the tide, Bukharin was overthrown and a provincial state council was put in place. However, this only caused the Union to start collapsing, and by 1941, the Soviet Union collapsed into warlord states, leaving Germans in control of most of the land west of the Urals. Within two years, the AA line was reached. It was a swift and brutal conflict, but in the ashes, the Reich's commissariats were set up to govern the new territories conquered by the Reich. The Reich's commissariat, Ostland, Ukraine, Mosavin, and Caucasus governed much of what was once Eastern Europe in the Caucasus. With all of the threats of mainland Europe dealt with, there was only one target for Germany and her European allies, the last bastion, the United Kingdom, but she had help. Around the same time as Barbarossa, the Japanese launched a surprise attack at Pearl Harbor, catching the American forces unprepared to defend themselves. It was a complete victory for the Japanese, destroying a lot of equipment and ships. However, this could easily be replaced as the Japanese were still no match for the American economy and industrial might, even with the bad handling of the depression. It looked like the tide might turn. However, the Japanese were winning victory after victory, with the Battle of Midway in 1942 coming out as a surprise Japanese victory. And it didn't stop there. The Philippines, Burma, Malaysia, Singapore were all conquered and had the flag of the rising sun above them. However, this was only a temporary stop. The Americans with their industrial might, they built back their navy and they were ready to get bloody. The US decided to go for a strategy of leapfrogging in 1943, going from island to island, slowly chipping away at the Japanese. As time went on, the US dominance in the Pacific grew and grew. Seeing this, the Japanese went for a defensive strategy against the American opponent, keeping most of their fleet back and safe. Even though there was hope in the East, hope in Europe had finally gone out. American soldiers finally arrived at the shores of Britain, however, it was too late. Operation Sea Lion had commenced in early 1943. The Kriegsmarine and the Luftwaffe made one indecisive blow to the Royal Navy. There was no challenger to the sea that led to the final European adversary to the Reich. With the IRA's help, allowing Germany to use South Irish ports the largest amphibious invasion in history was launched, quickly overrunning the UK's defences and with most of their army either killed or surrendered at Dunkirk or North Africa, the situation was hopeless. General Eisenhower had ordered one last defence of the island. It was now or never. The remaining survivors of the Allies prepared and were ready to fight to the death. Troops were from America, Britain, France, Belgium, the Netherlands, Poland, the USSR. They fought together and they died together. Panzer splits through them and they were pushed back and back and back. In April 1945, an evacuation was called and many Allied troops fled the island. When this happened, Scotland declared their independence and stated their neutrality, which the Reich accepted, wanting the conflict on the island to be over. Later, Wales did the same. 
leading to the war in Europe being over, many refugees from England and other lands of the Jack Cook swastika over it fled to Scotland as a safe haven in Europe. However, the war was still going on, as the Americans wanted to keep the fight going, and the Reich had a plan to finally end the war altogether and kick America out of the Pacific. The US needed a win and thought they could get one on the island of Iwo Jima. The US fleet showed up with no resistance and started sending troops ashore where they met heavy defences by the Japanese and with the marines pinned down, the imperial fleet appeared. The largest naval battle in history commenced with ships sunk on both sides leaving the Japanese navy devastated but the Americans had to pull back due to their losses, leaving the soldiers on the island to fend for themselves. Many of them would either end up in POW camps or fighting to the death. Even though the US had another devastating defeat, they could rebuild, which the Japanese couldn't. They had the manpower to keep pushing until the Pacific was free from terror. July 4th, 1945, a German bomber launched from a Japanese carrier dropped an atomic bomb over Pearl Harbor bringing the United States to the negotiation table, giving Japan complete dominance of the Pacific, and even some port cities on the west coast of America. Either way, it was all over now. All that remains was China. In mainland China, the situation had gotten desperate. With famine setting in across all of China, it looked bleak for the Chinese forces and with endless attacks on the Japanese, it was only a matter of time. After cruel offensive after cruel offensive, it was finally over. The last Chinese stronghold fell, and the world began a new dark age. The age of the fascist powers. Europe and Africa were split between the Germans and the Italians, with Germany having Reich's commissariats govern over their new colonies in the east and the south, along with Norway, Belgium and the Netherlands. France and England had fascist puppets installed in them, with England being a bit more in control of their own affairs to keep stability on the rebellious island. The middle of Africa was given to the Reich, with three new Reich's commissariats being formed, Ost Africa, Southwest Africa and Zinzel Africa, with all eyeing up their southern neighbour, South Africa. Italy increased its lands in the Balkans, owning a chunk of used to be Yugoslavia, as well as parts of North Africa. Japan gained much of Asia, creating puppet governments to help govern their lands, with countries like Indonesia and China being at the will of the samurai state. With the victory, the German Reich built massive projects like Germania 
and Dan Chopra, along with many others. But the Thousand Year Reich's relations turned sour. After the war, the relationship of Italy and Germany fell apart quickly. After the failed Entropa project, Italy left the Axis and created the Triumphant, a faction with Italy, Turkey and the new Iberian Union, and other nations around the Mediterranean Sea. The German-Japanese relationships fell apart too, but much faster than a sovereign neighbour, and a fierce rivalry is now in place between the three superpowers of the German Reich, the Japanese Empire and the United States of America. In response to Italy leaving the Axis and forming the Triumphant, the Germans created the Einheitspact, or the Unity Pact, which composed of all of its puppets and all the allies under the Reich's influence. However, the glorious Reich that conquered most of Europe fell into an economic crash in the 1950s, which sent shockwaves throughout her empire in Europe, eventually leading to factions forming within the Reich, led by prominent figures all giving their solutions to fix the crisis. One led by Albert Speer, who believed in liberalising the Reich. One by Hermann Gorn, believing in militarising the Reich and finishing its conquest of the world. And other, Martin Bormann, who believed that the Reich only needed a little reform but mainly keep things the same. If all this factionalism and infighting caused one man to be disillusioned of National Socialism. Heinrich Himmler. Himmler set about creating an even more devastating and cruel ideology. With the full support of the SS, he decided to wait and see if any opportunities would arise, and one did. The West Russian War began. On the edge of the Reich's commissary at Moscovin, a huge offensive partisan attackers led by the West Russian Revolutionary Front pushed back the fascists almost collapsing the whole eastern province. The Wehrmacht was sent in and a long and bloody war set in. Seeing the chaos, Heinrich Himmler and his SS executed a coup. However, General Hans Fiedel got wind of it and crushed the SS. Hitler, knowing he killed Himmler, would cause a civil war. So he was banished to a new state created out of a part of France and Belgium, the Ostad Bund or the SS state of Burgundy, where Himmler finally realised his ideology, the Burgundy system, which saw that National Socialism didn't go far enough that the only way to keep the German people strong is through constant hardship, and the only way to get a pure world was through nuclear flames, eradicating all the undesirables and leaving the world for the German Aryans to come out and reclaim it as theirs. And so a dark mechanism was set in motion as the black sun rose and the terror of the concentration state began. After years of fighting, the West Russian War was finally won by the Reich, but at a great cost, as the Russian invaders shattered and broke, only to leave the territories in the north loyal to the West Russian Revolutionary Front, broken but not defeated and they will keep trying to get the revenge on the right, which butchered their motherland, slaughtered their families and exterminated their friends. To fix their economic problems, the right incorporates slavery of the undesirables instead of extermination from the many poor souls stuck in the hills that were the death camps and the concentration camps. The year is 1962. The world lies in the cusp of chaos. The Reich is slowly starting to show more cracks with its elderly fear not long for this world and many within the Reich wanting to take his place. The Italian Empire trying to keep the triumphant together, even forming alliances and trade with old enemies as fascism slowly starts to fade from the country. The Japanese holding all their slave states and the Hawaii missile crisis taking place it's only a matter of time before the sun sets or goes supernova. The United States, bitter from their loss and looking for any opportunity to undermine the fascists and restore democracies to the land now under tyranny. And Burgundy, waiting and meddling for opportunities to unleash horror never before seen other than the SS state. 
With all the Russian warlord factions, it only takes one to unite them and to get their revenge that they all so desperately want. Will all this effort lead to nothing but the third and final world war? All of this is up to you. Choose wisely or doom us all. Everybody, thanks for watching my lore vid on the most depressing timeline in existence. Uh, I hope you guys check out the mod, it's real fun. Sorry if I didn't pronounce everything quite right or messed up certain little facts about the timeline. I was using the wiki and the other sources and stuff and some seem to be at conflict with each other. I hope this... Uh, video that took fucking forever to make will make you stay and subscribe and uh, if you do uh, a like and uh, share this about would be appreciated uh, thanks for watching if you want to see something similar to this because this is very different from my normal uploads uh, then just let me know and let me know what you want it to be about uh, thanks for watching and uh, Peace.